You know, I think I have to learn to stop promising when I'll post YouTube videos. Who am I kidding? I'm not gonna do that. So, one of these days I'll actually manage to get things out when I say I do, and, uh, when that day comes, everyone can celebrate. Kinda like a birthday, huh? Huh? Yeah. 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 Let's do this perfect podcast show. Start the episode. Good evening, YouTube. Welcome to the Perfect Podcast Show. Tonight, it's a review of SpongeBob's Big Birthday Blowout. And that's it. But isn't that enough? I'm Jeff the Shark, and Henry Danger fucking sucks, and you know it. And now your host, it's Pikachu All Spark. Welcome to the Perfect Podcast Show. I am your host, the king of YouTube, Pikachu Allspark. Yes, that is right. We are back for another week here on the Perfect Podcast Show. Uh, I didn't do the four-episode review. And I have a good explanation for that. Uh, But let's backtrack a bit. What am I talking about when I say the four-episode review? Well, if you follow my Twitter at Pikachu Allspark, you will see that... A couple of weeks ago, I tweeted that I was going to do a review of four Spongebob episodes that had recently premiered, and, uh, the reason that that didn't happen is because, well, when I was supposed to record the episode, I still hadn't seen two of them. And you might be wondering how this is possible. Well, uh, it's because I wasn't able to get up early enough for the senior discount and uh what what was the other one man i wish i didn't have such a terrible memory the one with senior discount let's see here and the other one's episode premiere so since i wasn't able to awaken myself early enough for those i wasn't really able to see those episodes until, well, until Friday, which was the date of the Spongebob birthday episode. And, uh, I don't know why I wasn't able to get up early enough to do those, to to see those episodes. I really don't. Because, for as long as I can remember, I've been able to do it. Whenever there's a new Spongebob episode on, I've been able to get up early enough, but but for that particular go-around, I for some odd reason wasn't. And I'm going to try to be better about that in the future. In about a week, there's a couple of new Spongebob episodes on sat- on a Saturday morning, and I plan to be awake for that. So, expect a review of those in the few days after they premiere. I swear I'm going to do that. I know my swears haven't meant much lately because I still haven't been able to get back on track for some reason, but hey, I'm continuing to try and that's all I can do right now is try. So I suppose we should get to the main event of this podcast. My review of Spongebob's Big Birthday Blowout. They stole the birthday idea episode from me! No, no, they didn't steal it from me. But yes, this is the 20th anniversary special of Spongebob Squarepants. I I still remember when I watched the 10th anniversary special, Truth or Square. In fact, I can remember it down to a surprising amount of details. It was, uh... Friday, November 6th, 2009, at 7 p.m. I was eating popcorn while watching it. You see how much I remember? That that surprises me. 
But we're not here for Truth or Square, we're here for Spongebob's Big Birthday Blowout. So yes, in this episode, it is Spongebob's birthday. His friends are planning a surprise party and Patrick takes him on a tour of surface land. And I've seen a lot of people on Twitter just completely overhyping this episode, saying it was the greatest thing they'd ever seen. I thought it was a good episode, you know. I, I enjoyed it, but I don't think it's the greatest Spongebob episode ever. Like, th there are still episodes better than this one. And I, I think everyone knows that. But this one was still good. I still enjoyed this episode quite a lot. Uh, one thing I really admired about this episode is that it was like constant jokes. They're just throwing jokes at the wall. And... A lot of them were really great, you know. Some of them didn't make any sense, like why there was a bean-themed party on the beach. Why, why would that happen? That just, I, I don't know, that, that screams, that screams something that wouldn't happen in a Spongebob episode, you know? I, I don't know how to explain it, but like, Spongebob doesn't seem like the type of show that's like, Oh, look at this random thing! Look at how random that is! That's funny! Like, when, when, when there's a joke on Spongebob, they tend to try to make it, you know, make sense, usually. At least, that's what I've noticed when watching the show for 20 whole years. But hey, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I don't think I am. Now, this episode had a lot of celebrity cameos in it. Uh, I'm not usually a fan of those, you know. Uh, m mainly because it's like... If somebody who's... It's basically saying, hey, look, this person is better than the thing we're showing you. So here's this person in the thing we're showing you. And this person makes it better. N no. One person does not make the show better. No matter how famous the name is. And I will always hold that opinion. Also, I noticed a lot of Nickelodeon putting their own stars into this. Uh, those don't count as famous people. And I will con I will fight pe I will fight a bitch on that. Like... If you are on Nickelodeon in a in a TV show, you're not actually famous. Of course, there are some exceptions, like SpongeBob SquarePants here has obviously managed to obtain a level of mainstream success. But if you're on something like Henry Danger, nobody knows who the fuck you are, and you ain't famous. And speaking of Henry Danger, oh, I got a big video coming out about that in the future. J just you wait. Just you wait until after this musical episode that got planned premieres. I I'm not going to spoil anything, but uh, I'm going to rip that a new one. Anyways, back to Spongebob, the main topic here. Yeah, celebrities don't make your thing better. What makes you What makes your thing better is you actively trying to make it the best possible thing it can be. That is how I feel about that, so... Yeah. Anyways, let's go through the things I enjoyed about this episode. Uh, I like seeing Patchy the Pirate again. Uh, we, we don't see Patchy the Pirate enough, in my opinion, and... I, th I think... I don't think he gets as much of a positive reaction as he should, you know. Uh, I remember going on Twitter a few years ago and people were just hating on Patchy the Pirate for some reason. And I always thought that was kind of dumb, you know. Uh, there are people who just want to get to the cartoon as quickly as possible, but... On the other hand, there are, there are over 200 Spongebob cartoons and... Patchy the Pirate's in like 10 of them, you know, so... It's not really a big problem seeing someone like Patchy the Pirate, you know. And I've always found his character quite enjoyable. Especially how he has Potty the Parrot, just, you know, the puppet bird on strings. That's 
That's fantastic. So yes, Patchy the Pirate, he he shouldn't be getting hate, he's a great character, you know. And yeah, he's he's been part of some of the better episodes of SpongeBob, like the Sponge Who Could Fly, and something that probably doesn't get mentioned as much as it should, SpongeBob's House Party. I, I feel like that episode isn't one that a lot of people really know too well because of how little Nickelodeon plays it, but I think it's a good episode. And yes, that's my patchy opinions. Possibly controversial. And we also get a cameo from David Hasselhoff in this. Uh, you may remember him as the savior of the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Now he's just old dude on the beach. Now something that interesting me is that the uh, the amazing fish finally gets a name. Uh, I don't think it was really necessary to name that fellow, but you know it's it's cool to see him named. So that's something. Uh, now I'm pretty sure that the happy birthday song is in the public domain again. For, I haven't checked that much recently, but I, I think it is so. They probably could have sung it, rather than just cutting it off at every attempt, but... Hey, it is what it is, I guess. Uh, we also get an appearance from Zeus the Guitar Lord again. Like, out of all the cameos, you know, that, that fellow, he's someone who should have been on Spongebob more. You know, well, why is this only his second appearance? Why is his second appearance just him standing in the background eating a Krabby Patty like this dude should have had his his own episode you know again like he should have had another episode where he has a speaking role and everything like like this dude Squidward helped him get a guitar like what is not to like about this character so yes the uh the live action scenes were quite interesting I I like how in a few parts they just used action figures in that tank, you know, uh, I don't know if that was laziness or not, but it, it's kind of funny that there were just action figures for a couple of the scenes there. I don't really like, I wasn't really a fan of them referring to the dog as a pie dragon because, well, a frisbee isn't pie, and when Patrick put it in his mouth and tried to eat it, he... He should have been able to tell that. Like, I, I get that Patrick's stupid and all, but he, he can tell that pa that plastic is not pie. He, he can understand that. Also, I don't think that that nearly naked beach giraffes joke worked that well because most of the people on that beach were fully covered. Like, aside from a couple of topless dudes, like, it, it was mostly just fully clothed people on that beach. And I'm aware that this is like a Nickelodeon thing, but I mean, they had people wearing normal beach attire in the SpongeBob movie Sponge Out of Water, so and and they play that on Nickelodeon like 20 times a week, so you know. I don't know, man. It just seems like the unrealisticness was unnecessary here. But hey, I'm not going to do too much complaining about it, because it really does not matter. This is a this is a show meant to do funny things in front of your face and make you laugh. Not to be accurate about what's on the beach, so... Let's continue that reviewing of the funniness. Uh, there were a lot of Nickelodeon people at this beach guessing thing. Kel Mitchell was dressed as a bean mascot, so that was that was interesting. Now I'm not really that into Nickelodeon's live action stuff these days because it's uh it's kind of unbearable really. Uh you know, I thought Night Squad was okay. It it was certainly better than Henry fucking Danger. Like, when are they going to get the hint with that freaking pile of garbage? It's it's not a good show, in the least bit, and yet they continue to push it and push it like 
Uh, how can somebody like Henry Danger is what I'm wondering, because the jokes make absolutely no sense, the characters are all complete and total asshats, and it's just... It's just awful. It's just truly and totally awful. As is most of Dan Schneider's work since 2012. But that's not the point, we're getting off track again. Back to the SpongeBob, uh... Midway through the episode, I'm... Midway through the episode, we get... A portrayal of what a Krusty Krab scene would look like in live action. So that was interesting, we got all the SpongeBob voice actors back, uh... I thought the Plankton bit was quite nice, you know, where... Where Charleston came into the trusty slab there, and, uh tried to steal the Slabby Patty secret sauce recipe. You know, that that laser gun he had was was really cool. And they found a way to make a human plankton have one eye with the whole eye patch thing, so I thought that was creative there. And of course, when he gets thrown into the garbage, we see a Krusty Krab pizza box, so that, that was a really fun thing to see. Enjoyed that a lot. So yes, the live action Krusty Krab scene was quite fun. I kinda I kinda enjoyed watching it. It, it was something alright. Then afterwards they get trapped in an aquarium for like one whole minute. Patrick pushed it somewhere else to to free them. I don't know if that's an actual reference to that episode where to you know the Sandy SpongeBob and the Worm episode where Patrick says to push Bikini Bottom somewhere else, but, I mean, he did the action of pushing their thing off the shelf, so, I'm just gonna take it. <laughs> and the weirdest thing to me is that, like, when those fish were added into Spongebob and the Tor Gang's tank, uh, they didn't turn into cartoon fish, like, they stayed CGI fish, like... Shouldn't they have turned into Spongebob animation style cartoon fish that could speak English? Like, it makes no sense that those are normal ass looking fish and the Spongebob ones are all weird. Does this mean that the Spongebob ones were a result of genetic manipulations from some nuclear testing thing and that that conspiracy theory is true? Because that's kind of the only thing that explains why the Spongebob characters are the way they are and these normal fish are the way they are. So, I don't know if, if that's how they wanted to portray that, but that's the vibe I got from it. So yes, uh, after that they go back, uh, Patchy the Pirate finally meets Spongebob, uh, and sings him a birthday song, uh, you know, I don't really... I'm not really a fan of characters cutting their own heads off. Like, what? why did he cut his own head off? Like, I don't know, like, dismemberment is not something that I'm into that much, you know. Uh, especially the disturbing image of Patchy's body shaking on that island. Uh, that was just... Why would you even show that? And yeah, that... I suppose is my thoughts on this episode. Uh, I, I do like how the dog became increasingly... Like, by by the later part of the episode, the, the dog was just a puppet standing on all four, standing on two legs, you know. Uh, I thought that was quite funny. Uh, also, another thing that... Uh, that office scene, uh, that kinda, I don't really think that was all that great, you know, uh, that didn't really, the whole random ape mask thing was just, again, random style jokes are not something I'm into, I, I, I like it when the jokes make sense, and luckily this one had more jokes making sense than random out of nowhere nonsense, so it was quite alright, uh I enjoyed it quite a bit. The different sections of SpongeBob's party were 
that SpongeBob never never actually got to attend that party, but the different sections of the party were all quite funny. Uh, it, it was nice to see stuff like that. Uh, Mrs. Puff existing and not being constantly angry at SpongeBob was a plus for once. In fact, she was actually acting like a driving teacher, so that was that was quite good. Uh, Plankton torturing Fred into giving out, into saying my leg was great. Uh, yeah, I I found this episode to be quite a fun one. I enjoyed it a lot, and uh, it's been twenty whole years of SpongeBob SquarePants. Man, I. You know, I, I remember watching Truth or Square ten years ago, and uh, at, at the end of that episode, they, they I'm, I'm guessing jokingly, flipped an hourglass and said, now we wait for the 20th anniversary. The 20th anniversary is here. That's now. Honestly, I, I didn't know that Spongebob would still be going on in 2019. I really didn't. But here it is. Spongebob has continued on and will probably continue on for a, a lot longer. And the question is, should it? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm certainly hoping it continues as long as it, sh as it can. You know, uh, I enjoy Spongebob quite a lot, and even though I've had some issues with newer episodes lately... That doesn't mean I'm rooting for the show to fail, like I see some people trying to do. I'm I'm actively hoping that with each new episode that I'm going to watch a good episode when I tune in, and that's what motivates me to continue watching the show. I, I know the people behind it can make good content, because they've made good content for so, so long, and I really believe in them. So... I'm always hoping that Spongebob will be good, and if you're always hoping it will be good, then that's probably a good way that you can never fall out of watching Spongebob, you know? Uh, there are people who say, oh, I grew out of this, or oh, this is too little kiddish now, or something. Like, if you're feeling that way, you should always, you should always hold out hope that the next episode will be something you really like. And then if it is, it will pleasantly surprise you. So yes, uh, I guess those are my thoughts on the 20th anniversary episode of Spongebob Squarepants, Spongebob's big birthday blowout. I thought it was a pretty good episode, uh, a, a bit overhyped on Twitter, but a fine episode indeed, uh. And, and that's what I have to say about that. And remember, people, if you're ever feeling down about the series, uh, just remember, these people can make a good product, and, well, you just gotta believe in them, I guess. And that's all I have to say for this week on the Perfect Podcast Show. Uh, you can follow me on my second channel at Pikachu Allspark TV, my Twitter at Pikachu Allspark, and until next week, all hail the king. Would you just calm down?